Hi, I'm Edis. And I'm reviewing the charts for this season, upcoming season's uh, cruises. And looking at some of the uh, chart symbols, I thought, hey, you know, it'd be a nice idea to review a few of these with everybody. Now, I know for some of you, this is going to be very, very basic. But let's take a look at probably the eight most common ones that you're going to see and ones that you need to be aware of. Now, as you're looking at your charts, whether they're paper or digital, a lot of the markings are going to have PA next to them. And that's not for Pennsylvania, that's for position approximate. All right, so let's take a look at a few of these. Oh, and if you really want to get in depth on the charts, go to the NOAA site and download the um, US chart number one. I think it's like 135 pages of different chart abbreviations and uh, symbols and buoys and all kinds of data. That's for a rainy day. Um, but for today, which is a nice sunny day here in Wisconsin where I'm visiting, let's take a look at some of these symbols. Now I'm using Navionics uh, app for most of this and what I use for my primary or I should say my secondary chart plotter. Well let's start with fish trap areas and there are quite a few around the bay and other places. Now they're not marked in a specific location but rather a large region and here where you see it says fish trap area or fish trap they could be anywhere in there, so you really need to keep your eye out for them. And this is what they look like on the water. And this is what they look like before they get put up. You can see they're pretty substantial and you want to stay away from them. Now the fish havens, those are very, pretty well marked also. And some of them will actually, as you scroll over them, will tell you what might be underneath there. Most of them don't have a depth mark on them because the depth can change. Um, but it might have like a minimum de depth or a maximum depth on it. And if you can, I always try to avoid them anyway, even though it may look like I've got plenty of water, I only draw five feet. Oh, I take a chance. Who knows what storm has moved something around down there and could be sticking up. I mean, for the extra couple of minutes, in my opinion anyway, it's worth going around. And then, of course, rocks. There's always rocks somewhere. And here's an idea of kind of how that looks from the side. But what it looks like on the chart is one thing. And to give you an idea of how it could be on the bottom of the surface, I've put this little uh, picture in, too. And submerged items, again, there, there may or may not be a depth next to it and usually it's old piling somewhere or something like that and you'll find them primarily near the shore or shoal areas and again I try to go around them you can't avoid all of them I guess uh, there's quite a few on the bay and but I try to do my best to stay away from them and the same with the spoil areas, they're marked and usually they don't have a depth to them because the depth can change. Some of them will have a uh, safe depth. And again, it's something that if you can avoid it, I would. I definitely wouldn't troll over that area. The fish havens, that's a different story. That's what those are there for. When anchor next to them or anchor over them, because you're going to probably foul your anchor on that. And the same with the spoil areas. You don't want to anchor over that. You may not want to troll over that either when you're fishing. And prohibited areas, <laughs> guys, that's just what that means. Prohibited. Don't go in that area. And there are several areas like that on the Chesapeake Bay where the military uses those areas for target practice and there could be unexploded munitions down there 
usually there'll be uh, patrol boats out when they are firing on that area but again it's a prohibited area stay away from it especially like when you get up around uh, the northern chesapeake bay where you have aberdeen proving grounds there's a lot of prohibited areas up in that area don't ruin your day with the visit from the coast guard or the navy now another symbol you'll see a lot of is shipwrecks now some of them will have like a little bit of a ship with a mast sticking up and those are usually somewhat visible at low tide maybe and then if you see one with um, like fish bones or just bones but there's no circle around it usually those are safe to go over and there'll be a depth marker on that um, I suppose that's safe to go over I, I try to avoid all of those kind of things you definitely don't want to be trolling in that area and catch something and one that has the bones and a dotted line around it that one you should probably avoid uh, that could be just a few feet under the water again some of them may have a depth on them most of them won't and they'll have the pa for position approximate because they're going to shift with different storms that happen so keep an eye out for those but use care and common sense and discretion with all of these different symbols and stay safe out there guys and enjoy yourselves now as i said earlier this is really kind of basic but i just wanted to give you an idea of some of the things that you could find on your charts it is fun to look at uh, u.s chart number one get a little better idea of things uh, for example uh, areas where there's turbulence or breakwater uh, that's particularly there's a couple areas like that on the jersey coast where some of the inlets on the northern side might be uh, breakwater where even minimum waves are breaking and can be very dangerous or on the south side and some of the charts they spell it right out for you others it's just a symbol so it's kind of fun to look at this and it's good to look at it and learn it before you get into trouble and while you're sitting in a nice relaxed place and can take your time well, anyway, until next time, guys, happy and safe boating to you, your family, and friends.